Hello, everybody. Josh Neighbors here. It is our weekly Locked On Big 12 crossover. I am Josh Neighbors of the Locked On Big 12 podcast. To my right is Linda Godfrey. She is the host of the Locked On Pokes podcast. Below her it is Stephen Simcox. Stephen, Stephen, there. Yeah. Stephen Simcox. He hosts Locked On Horn Frogs. To his left, it is Jay Catch. He hosts Locked On Cougars. We are waiting on John Williams, who's the host of the Locked On Sooners podcast. Um, I thought we were going to talk some some early spring football, college basketball, national championship stuff. Uh, no, we've got a big piece of news. Bob Bowlesby is on his way out as Big 12 commissioner. We'll talk about the timing of this and kind of the future and all of the things that are tying into this right now. It's a very uh, it's a very thorough conversation I think we're about to have because there are a whole lot of angles to attack this. All that coming up on the night show. Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so today the Big 12 Conference sent out a press release, almost article style type thing, where they said that Bob Bowlesby is going to be stepping away from his role as Big 12 Commissioner at the end of the year. The most important thing to know, though, folks, about today is that the Kansas Jayhawks are the national champions in college basketball. The Big 12 has gone back to back. All right. Do not let that be lost on you throughout all of this. But um, he is going to be stepping away at the end of the year. I think the goal that they stated was a 90 day period to try and find a replacement for Bob Bowlesby. Just initial reactions, Linda, the first, your first thought when you heard this news on the day after the national championship, after a Big 12 team once again won the national championship. Oh, we can't hear you. I, didn't, I know there I was go. muted. That's my there bad. Um, my thoughts when I initially heard this versus my thoughts now differ greatly, but even at the time it was a kind of relief while also acknowledging that I think he handled – the screw up he made happen with OU and Texas leaving, he handled the repercussions well. And, uh, you know, bidding for a bigger playoff picture, I think he handled that well. But as a whole, I think it's, we're all pretty happy to say sayonara. That's interesting. Steven, I feel like you are also kind of on the critical Bob Bowlesby train. Well, I think the timing is interesting, right? Because I, I feel like while well, Bob is taking a lot of criticism, and I would say most of it has been deserved, um, I'm not sure he's ever been more popular, to be honest. Like, he still gets a heavy, you know, dose of criticism. But um, the way he – like, back this summer, I feel like most people thought this league was coming to an end. You know, one way or the other, it was going to disband, or it was just going to look completely different and have basically – a lot of group of five teams um, sprinkled in with maybe a few power five holdovers, but he was able to get, you know, the, the eight schools that were left to kind of band together and stick together, at least for now. Um, he was able to get expansion done, which is something the big 12 has tried in the past and hasn't been successful with. And I mean, I agree with Linda that he's never been proactive. And I think that's the biggest issue people have with Bob Bowlesby. He's never been someone that seems to see, the landscape changing um, and get ahead of it. However, I think he did a good job in the midst of these issues. Um, and, you know, like if somebody gets cheated on, you don't blame the person they got cheated on. Like Texas and OU went out and got this deal done. Um, obviously he could have been more proactive in finding out what their issues were, trying to cut off the SEC, but it seemed like they were making this move one, one way or the other. So, the timing sort of shocks me um, because it felt like he was the the person that was sort of rallying the troops and saying, Hey, the big 12 has a bright future and, and I want to be the one that that's leading it. But, you know, I get it. He's at, at an older age. I'm sure it's an exhausting job. Um, and I, I would imagine it's going to be a much tougher job in the next few years, even though he's pulled off this expansion, uh, rebranding, getting new teams involved, trying to stay relevant in a, a changing a changing landscape of college sports. 
But uh, yeah, I think maybe he's maybe he's going out as close to the top as he could, given that I feel like he's probably more popular than he's ever been, um, especially when you look at the last five or six years of his tenure. Jake, as somebody who is covering a team that is coming into the conference and seeing the commissioner go who facilitated that change, your thoughts on the news today? Uh, I think most BYU fans are very appreciative to Bob Bowlesby and the Big 12, obviously, for bringing them into the fold. They've been hoping to make the to make it into the Power Five for years now. It's been a decade of independence. So I think it's mixed emotions because I think there are BYU fans out there who wonder what this means for the Cougars and these other new programs that are coming into the conference when the guy who helped spearhead getting him into the conference is stepping aside. It sounds like Bob is going to stick with the Big 12 in some other capacity, so he'll still have a voice, it sounds like, inside the conference. But I think the overall thing is BYU fans are appreciative of him bringing BYU into the fold, but I think there are many out there who wonder, okay, what's going to be different now with a new commissioner taking over versus what might have happened with Bob actually running the show when those schools entered? John, your thoughts on the news. Also, welcome John Williams, the host of Locked on Sooners. Uh, your thoughts on the news today of Bob Bowlesby's departure, or imminent departure, I should say. Yeah, I think like the rest of you guys, I'm I'm surprised as well. I, I felt like this was going to be a guy that was going to see through the next expansion and where that takes the Big 12 from here. He was kind of one of the, the lone voices outside of the SEC that was – you know, promoting a, a strong 12 team playoff. And so it is interesting. I mean, he's not necessarily the the most respected commissioner in the country or in the power five, but um, you know, he's done some good things, but at the same time, I feel like some of the inactivity and expanding earlier uh, is going to be part of his legacy where I felt like had they expanded maybe, you know, several years back do Oklahoma and Texas stay, what does the big 12 look like in the future? I don't know, but um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see, and it is a bit of a surprise to see him moving on. All right, so I, I've, I've made a list here. Bob Bob Bowlesby Notables, he came on in 2012. Uh, he was involved in the Big 12 TV contract that runs through 2025. Lost Oklahoma and Texas to the SEC. I actually – I think there's a conversation to be had about how, how much at fault he is for that. Added BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF for the Big 12. Involved in the proposal for college ball playoff expansion that probably gets passed eventually. That is just my, that's my opinion projecting on that point. It's what you all know that, but there you go. You can kind of see those notables at least recently. And also uh, the one true champion thing that Steven Simcox actually noted to us, all of us earlier, and that really kind of screwed the big 12 back in 2014, the round Robin play that results in one true champion. Uh, anytime you have round Robins um, and also an odd number of suits, like there's chances to tie. So that really kind of was a, was an off-putting thing. Um, so, Stephen, you were, you were right on about that. I do want to say this. I think timing-wise, in terms of a specific day, this did not make any sense. The day after you, you're, one of your teams wins a championship, why could we have not done this on Tuesday or Wednesday or put a Friday news dump and done this? Timing-wise, in the greater picture, this does actually make a lot of sense. Think about it this way. Uh, this is the uh, this is kind of the old stuff. The future considerations. The Big 12 grant of rights expires after the 2024-2025 a- athletic calendar. OU and Texas no, will no longer be uh, or will, will not be leaving the conference until the summer of 2025. Most likely, they could change. The conference will be looking to have 14 teams playing in 2024. Also, Mike Gundy's point. He thinks they might actually add more. So. There's three factors here. One, television contract, 2024-2025. Not really sure 70-year-old Bob Bowlesby is the right guy to be negotiating that contract on behalf of the Big 12. Number two, as much as I have been an advocate for him putting his differences aside with Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the SEC, and finding a plan for college football playoff expansion, it did get shot down, right? So. Um, I think whatever commissioner comes along would obviously pick up that mantle, but having once again, 70 year old Bob Bowlesby being the one fighting for that is probably not the right thing on the big 12s behalf. And also the potential of adding new teams, not sure I want Bob Bowlesby in that mix and then having to pass it on to somebody else. You see this happen a lot in sports with specific teams, right? There's a certain time for GMs or coaches to step aside when a team is going through a certain transition. 
right? Or pre-transition, or you don't, you know, you don't want a case where a certain front office does a draft, then pa- passes that draft or you know, those players on to the next front office slash coaching staff. This is kind of the way I see this. The timing, generally speaking, makes sense. The timing specific to the date does not. So that's where, that's where I am with this. Um, I will push back on some of the points of, of, you know, what the, Steven, what was he supposed to do about OU in Texas? Like there's nothing he could have done proactively to stop that from happening. I mean, there's just too much money. We know this for a fact. There's too much money in the big 10 and the sec. No, I see your point, but I think, and it's not all on him because there was expansion on the table in the past and it didn't get passed. Like it, it didn't get through. So the big 12 didn't expand. Um, but I think the brand of the league just sort of fell to a certain extent that it became the little brother in some ways. And I imagine some of that's on Bob Bowlesby. Some of it's also, you know, the flagship program, Texas wasn't really holding up there into the bargain in football. Um, Oklahoma's made the college football playoff. They haven't broken through and made a national title game. That's not specifically an Oklahoma problem. That's a big 12 problem. But the bottom line is in the biggest sport and the biggest stage, the league has struggled. I think there's a lack of respect around the country for the conference. And I feel like some of that falls on Bob Bowlesby. Um, you know, there's an episode of The Office where Michael Scott's at a sales conference and he says, uh, I love inside jokes. I'd love to be a part of one one day. And that kind of, to me, feels like Bob. Like, I don't think it's all his fault, but I, I, even even when he has a great idea, like the 12-team playoff, Right. It's like it's like the other commissioners say, oh, good job, Bob. And they put his little what he scribbled on the napkin on the refrigerator. And we're like, we'll keep that over there to show, you know, our friends what Bob did uh, during. during I would push back and say the the, but the most powerful man in college athletics, Greg Sankey, was on board with it. So now you're right in the sense of, look, the alliance for some idiotic reason, like we all discussed previously, you know, for for certain concerns about the student athletes and. Oh, you know, television contracts that weren't just, you know, figured out, whatever voted against it. We, we just, we, you know, in a sport that's all about money, we just apparently don't want more money now. It makes no sense. But from that perspective, yeah. you're right. He was on the outside looking in, but he was aligned with the guy who did take the two teams for, and he said, all right, I'll do this for the greater good. So he was kind of in the right direction, but on the outside of the three assholes who weren't doing the right thing. Yes. And I think his best moments have been post, uh, you know, the, the not the league dissolving, but the two teams leaving. Yeah. I just, I mean, at the same time, like Greg Sankey, and listen, he, this might just be like, it's business, it is what it is, or this might be Greg Sankey, he would treat everyone this way. But Greg Sankey didn't have the respect for Bob Bowlesby to be like, hey, heads up, you know, we've been talking with Texas and OU, we're doing this behind your back. Texas and OU didn't have the respect for Bob Bowlesby to say, hey, guess what, we're doing this. Um, maybe you guys should have a plan in place. And that might be across the board what they would have done. I don't know. It's just a situation. It's just business. It's just trying to get TV deals done. Um, but I think fair or not fair, there is a, a status that he is missing. And I don't feel like it's completely his fault, but I think it's a good opportunity now for the Big 12 to maybe get somebody who can throw their weight around in that room a little bit more um, if they can find you know a younger, more engaged uh, more in tune with what's going on person to take over and, and lead the conference moving forward. Linda, what do you think about just kind of those ideas of like, what is it, what does it need to look like for a new big 12 commissioner? Does it need to be somebody whose sole focus is college football playoff balance between that and the television stuff? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not sold on, on a straight up athletic director being the right guy for this conference heading into a new era. Yeah. Guy or girl, girl, excuse me. uh, You're right. I was going to, I should have pitched a fit about that. (laughs) Missed my chance. Um, No, I think getting anybody young in that can bring some excitement to meetings like that is a great idea. I'd also like to say that arguing that the guy that probably makes the most money of the commissioner's is down for making more money is like, of course he is. He was all in on that deal, regardless of respect for Bob Bowlesby. So, um, mm-hmm. I, you know, you don't make more money by not agreeing to make more money, but I, yeah, I think a young, exciting, I, 
it's kind of a new era in all like you're watching the NFL turn over a bunch of old quarterbacks to like new young exciting guys and it gets people to buy back in so that's what we need I I don't care if they're an athletic director how do they run their social media how can they buy into people because I think that's a big proponent that maybe the 70 year old uh, Bob Bowlesby was not hitting at all Jake this this brings up an interesting point the Pac-12 goes and gets George Klyovkov, who is involved, and, and you know they 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 overcorrect, which probably rightfully so, from Larry Scott to George Klyovkov, who is somebody that was involved in entertainment, and I I don't know if that's that's a direction. I, mean, I think it might be a direction the Big Twelve should probably go in. Like this is the new frontier: Netflix, Hulu, Amazon. If you want to capitalize on a product that people might be saying, okay, they're down on it because OU and Texas are leaving, well, new new media uh, platforms might overpay for your product if they're trying to enter the business, right? If they're trying to break into the space, we see all the time, people overpay to break into a space. Why do you think Kirk Herbstreit's getting the money he's getting from Amazon, right? There's a certain reason why he and Al Michaels are getting paid. So- Maybe somebody from the media space, maybe somebody kind of in the light of or a hybrid George Klyovkov who's entertainment. So kind of more yeah. broadly can affect things like that. What are your thoughts on that? Well, sports, business, entertainment, something like that, because you have to have that background now because you're right. The the, the, the melding of these worlds are, are coming together because there are there is new media out there. The streaming services, the traditional TV packages, just the simple fact you have to make these games. They have to be an event. That's the thing that you have to. And George Klyovkov working for MGM down there in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. He knows he knows business. He knows entertainment. And he's now entering the sports realm where he's melding all that together. The Big 12 would do well to kick the tires on a guy like that. I am of the opinion that a guy like Oliver Luck, with his experience or having run the XFL, having been an athletic director, having been in uh, NCAA administration, he's got a pretty well-rounded outside look at it. The one thing he doesn't have is the business acumen, maybe, that some people may look at and say you need to have in this day and age. But they do need to look and say, okay, we need to maybe look outside the box because that's what the Pac-12 did. Klyovkov, George, he was not on the radar of anybody's uh, traditional list of, okay, who might be in the running here for the Pac-12? And all of a sudden, their MGM executive, George Klyovkov, is the Pac-12 commissioner. Right. It caught everybody off guard. So the Big 12, they do well to really, I think, have a wide search and examine all opportunities for different potential uh, people to take over as the commissioner because – I don't think, yeah, the traditional elevation of an athletic director, it ain't going to cut it in this day and age. John, you must be sad. You're missing out on all this fun what-if conversation. You're heading to boring old linear cable. Boo! Boo linear cable. That's, that's where you're headed. That, that's where OU is headed. Now, yeah. it's going to be fine because it's the SEC, but you're missing out on the new frontier. You could you could be on Netflix. I know. I mean, but OU's going to miss out on the chance. I know. I'm looking forward to watching some games on uh, Apple Plus and Prime Video and all that good stuff. So, yeah, it's interesting. I think, you know, Jake brings up a good point of finding somebody that's going to have a lot of – really a balance and an understanding of the way modern entertainment works. I think that's a really – important aspect of what college sports is. I mean, we just got done with, you know, March Madness, the final four NCAA mm-hmm. championship game. Like all of that is an event. And the reason that people are driven to that is because of the event that it is with the, the great moniker and March Madness and, you know, the great names for each round, the sweet 16, the final four, the elite eight, like that stuff draws people in. It's catchy. It hooks people. And even if you don't care about college basketball, you you get into it in March because of the great, branding of it to be honest and a lot of that is part of the new frontier of college sports and it's going to matter and for the big 12 to be a player in the group of five or the start of the power five that you know getting that big tv contract having better branding better marketing is going to help move them forward on that front now i'm a big fan of the commercials i think the the big 12 commercials that you see play during games are pretty good uh, but it's now going to have to go into a new space social media is a big uh, draw and a big attractor of athletes and how the big 12 represents itself on social media is going to matter moving forward as well. All right. Quick word from our sponsors here on today's show. Tonight's show is brought to you by built bar. Go to built.com today. That's built.com. Check out all the flavors available. They have right now, mint brownie, coconut, coconut, almond, just to name a few. Most built bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, 
four net carbs and 17 grams of protein. You go to built.com today. That's built.com, promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCK15, at built.com. Today is better for you than a candy bar. It tastes just like a candy bar. Good post-workout. Oh, he's got one. Yeah. What do you got there, Jake? Do we have, what flavor do we have? This one's a Rocky Road. My wife, oh. this is her favorite oh. flavor. I'm, I have some other ones that are my favorites, but this is a really good one. So there you go. I'm a Rocky Road guy. That is fantastic. So, and you can do it pre-workout, post-workout. Like I promise I've done, I've guys, I've had one for breakfast, driven to the gym and worked out and felt great and fine. It's like a breakfast. You're good to go. Do that. Lock 15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, lock 15 at built.com. All right, let's get into this TV stuff. That Because this to me, does anybody object? Like the most important part of this is that the Big 12 grant of rights is up in 2024, 2025. Anybody object to this at all? No? No. Yeah, that's the most important part. All right, so it kind of brings bears the question. Yeah, and the college football playoffs can be part of this, but that's kind of a larger, that's a larger thing. Uh, we obviously have seen that we, you know, our conference alone cannot impact that. So my question is, where would you like to see the Big 12? There were some complaints, right? Um, I forget who the senator was from West Virginia complaining about, or House member or whoever it was, complaining about, about, West Virginia not being available there like that that complaint is like already like so outdated because of where entertainment is heading but I think I think this is the Big 12's this is the Big 12's best avenue this is their chance and I want to add in I think Kansas winning once again shows you that sure this is not North Carolina this is not Duke but this is the best basketball in the country if you want to talk about winning championships if you're gonna talk about, you know, it, like, sure, just don't put the best, you know, the best basketball conference in the country on television. Just care about Duke and Carolina. No, pe- people are gonna want to watch Kansas. Well, unless they get screwed by NCAA, a different story. But want to watch Baylor, Texas Tech, Texas for as, as long as they're here. West Virginia, Houston comes in a Final Four caliber team in their own right. Stephen, I'll go to you first. Uh, I think Big Twelve basketball is a great product to have. And I'm interested to see how they, they spread both football and basketball out. Would you like to see non-linear platforms, even though it might cost more and be better, f- but but be better for the long-term health of the conference? I do, and I think this is a great discussion. My struggle is I don't like streaming. I think streaming's the future. I think that's what you have to look at. I also know that there's still a lot of people that complain about Big 12 games being on ESPN Plus, especially Big 12 like. Big time, Big Twelve basketball right. games, and I think ESPN Plus is a good service. Like, it's not a lot of money; you get a lot of content. Um, it's really good. I feel like for a lot of the sports that don't get a ton of attention, like you can just get that service and watch all those games. There's a bunch of baseball and softball games on ESPN Plus just about every night of the week, but I, I don't know what the best space for it is. I think um, again, y- y- you've seen the NFL pivot to Prime Video to some success, but it does feel like being on traditional television still matters to a certain extent. So I think it's a balance of both, but I don't know what year it is that you totally make that transition to, okay, we're, we're fully on Hulu, right? Like it's it's the big 12 on Hulu. You just need to get this, you know, 1099 a month service and then you can watch all the games. Uh, But I think some sort of exclusive streaming deal would be huge because it would allow people, okay, this is the one thing I have to get, you know, because there's so many different options now. It is there is a there is an argument that it's becoming sort of like cable with all the different monthly you know payments you have to make. But if you had some sort of exclusive streaming deal, this is where we are. This is the place to be. Um, I think that could compete with the SEC on CBS eventually. Maybe not initially, but in the next few years, that's where media uh, appears to be going. Lindy, what are your thoughts on them potentially spreading it out, doing part linear cable? Part th- th- This is the approach I would take is part linear cable for your big games. And also then, you know, make an Amazon, make an Apple TV Plus, make a, uh, you know, make a Hulu, whoever, spend money on your, you know, if they want to break into the space. Uh, DAZN is a great example of this. DAZN is somebody that wanted to break into the American space. What they pay for boxing and 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 the argument of whether or not it's paid off for them is is you know it's kind of up up in the air but 
What what do you think uh, about splitting up the package? Would you want to see it linear, or you know, a little bit of streaming like it is now, or do you want to kind of see it all over the place for the health of the conference? All over the place is strong, but like putting big games like Bedlam or OU versus Texas while they're still here, or any. But how do you drive like subscriptions? That, how do you drive subscriptions? That's fair, but I'm as a as a fan, I'm going to pay for whatever service they put it on. Right. They put it on ESPN Plus. I was like, well, now I have ESPN Plus. Which, by the way, Stephen, I think you might be giving them a little too much praise. They have started games an hour late. They have left softball completely off before. So I do have some, like, it's nice yeah, the, in, in theory, but it's not always executed to perfection. ESPN the production Plus. value is is not great. And uh, they, let me, can I comment on this as somebody who calls games on ESPN Plus? Can I it's just, mainly student led. I'm sure you're great. So, so yeah. the, 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 the thing is, is that the schools get the money distributed to them to run yeah. their broadcast. And look, right. there are, I work at Richmond. There are some really capable people. Sometimes the equipment at that level, when there's three people running the entire broadcast, the broadcaster, a cameraman and producer is just not going to hold up. So Linda and, and Steven, your, your criticisms are warranted. It's just like they're, they're you know, not every game is a truck game, right? They, they call them the industry yeah. Uh, the guys I work with who call games, they call them truck games. Yeah, a lot of them aren't truck games. That, that, is, that is one part of this. Now now I feel bad. Now I feel like I attacked people. No, not me. Not attacked. Attacked. No, I, I think they should it's have fair. sent Kirk Herb Street to TCU UTA tonight, and I'm upset that they didn't. Like, get <laughs> well, get which him is, out there. Which, it's, it's a fair criticism, and also it's like it's part of, it, it's part of the way this works. Yeah. It's also part of trial yeah. and error, and this stuff will improve over time. But I agree. I think getting into a streaming platform now, or like, you know, we still have a couple of years, but in the next couple of years, and then you're, it's not going to grow immediately. But I think if you give it some time, then you could see that kind of profit. And like, I don't have Hulu. If a uh, big 12 ends up on Hulu, I will gladly purchase Hulu tomorrow. Like I'll do it without mm. thinking about it. I'll figure I'll it out. I'll send you my login, Linda. It's okay. <laughs> How, how have you not bundled Disney plus ESPN plus and Hulu together already? Come on. Now. Yeah. I'm not because there's too many <laughs> options. It stresses me out. It's too, I just watch Gilmore three, Girls on Netflix or... when sports aren't on. That's like, uh, I just watch Gilmore Girls and that's it. I So Jake, um, the last time I, last time I heard George Clea, I've got to talk about this. I'm sure he said it elsewhere. I was actually working Pac-12 this morning and yep. he had said, I think the next round of TV contracts end up staying primarily linear. I don't know if that's true for the Pac-12 because are we because let's let's just let's just compare the Pac-12 to to the to the Big 12. Besides Lincoln Riley and and, and Phil Knight, and which I know is two big ifs, but like what actually on the field does the and on the court too does the Pac-12 have that the Big 12 doesn't like. It, Oh, USC with yeah. Lincoln Riley, sure. It's on ESPN, the spring game, whatever. But I don't know if the Pac-12, you know, West Coast, like you're supposed to be forward thinking. I'm not sure if saying our next round is going to be linear cable pretty much is the right move. I think that comment in particular from Klyovkov is an overcorrection overcorre- from the debacle that was the Pac-12 network in their last grant of rights. I, right. I think that they are trying to find mm-hmm. a way to get themselves back in the national consciousness with more primetime games on linear TV. I'm with you. I, sure. I, I think I don't think linear should be the focus. I just think the Pac-12 is still trying to overcorrect from what happened last time, where the Pac-12 network is still not distributed on direct TV. It, it's an absolute debacle. But the the I, so I think Klyavkov was a little presumptuous in saying that, but at the same time, I get why he's saying it because he's trying to stand up for his conference where they're trying to win back their fans. Cause I think he understands that their on field product. It's not great. They're hoping that Lincoln Riley and USC rise to prominence very quickly because they need that. They need Oregon to be good. They, they need those brand name schools to be good in that conference. But I, I think that's a little bit where things diverge for with the big 12 versus the Pac 12, the big 12, we are, they're already working in the streaming space. I've actually talked to enough BYU fans who have already asked me, Jake, well, what's happening with BYU TV? I've told them BYU TV, all the stuff that they have broadcast for years is BYU being an independent. It's most likely going to ESPN plus. So I, I've told mm-hmm. BYU fans get ESPN plus now get familiar with it because it is going to be part of, of what BYU sports are going to be on. It's just a simple fact of the matter. So I actually like the fact that the Big 12 is ahead of the curve 
in this uh, respect rather than saying, no, we're going to stick to the traditional methods. They're actually being a little more innovative, and I think it's to their advantage. Yeah, for the Pac-12, the one thing, it's a great point you brought up. They also want some discretion in when their yes. games happen. Yep, ac- they, absolutely. They need that badly. They they are really dead set on like making sure that their games can happen if it's a deciding game, Utah, Oregon, whatever, happens in prime time if they wanted to. Or a game for the Pac-12 North is not at 1030 at night. Yeah, prime, prime time on the East Coast. That's what they want. They, yes. they don't want they don't want the 1030, 11 o'clock kickoffs. And BYU, they're going to be part of that for the Big 12 here. I, I'm, I'm fully anticipating BYU home games during Big 12 season. Guess what, folks? 930 Central time, 1030 Eastern time. It's 830 here in Utah. That's what it's going to be. But the Big 12, you're right. As a conference, they want some discretion and putting some stuff on the prime time windows on the East Coast. And We'll see how it works out. John, do you think if we see 14 teams that, you know, with the way the way it is now on ESPN, ESPN Plus, Fox, and if we get it all in football, do you think that even after OU and Texas leave, Mike Gundy's point's going to hold true? There, there, I'm not even sure he made this as part of his point, but there might be that appetite for 14, just kind of the way people saw it all over the place and all of its different forms and all of its football, basketball, baseball, softball, all over the place on all the different platforms. Do you think the big 12 might say, man, we got that 14 team itch. We want to keep that. Or do you think they'll just stay where they are for a little bit of time? I think it depends on who the potential teams might be that they bring in. You know, if you're looking at just bringing in two teams just because then no, but if there's a couple of teams that are hot, part of the group of five that makes sense, maybe like an SMU, um, mm-hmm. that, that has a crosstown rival right there with TCU that would create a lot of interest locally. That that's a really big rivalry. That with the conference or the in conference matchup adding to that factor, I feel like it could create a little bit more national buzz too. But it just depends on who they would be targeting to bring in. Because I mean, more conference games I think is is more fun than playing you know a, a, a group of you know a lower group of five team or an FCS school I think adding an extra conference game would make it even more enjoyable I think the we're seeing a, a move toward bigger conferences across the country across the power five and so it wouldn't surprise me necessarily to see the big 12 decide to re-expand to 14 after the 2024 season uh, it just depends on who those teams are that they're going to target it, it's going to have to make sense both from a on-field product stance, a financial standpoint, and then also potentially opening up new markets for them as well. All right, one more word from our sponsors here today on the show. Uh, we are brought to you by rockauto.com. You guys go to rockauto.com today. You'll find the best parts and best prices for your vehicle. Why choose to spend 30 50 or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership? For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is three fifty three from a chain store two sixteen at RockAuto.com. It's a family run business serving auto parts customers online. For there it is, there it is. Jake's got order. it all. Jake's got it all working tonight. Literally, I had to order a new light this week for my. It's my blinker light on my car, so that's that's the box that just came. Did in. you get what? Did you get what you needed? I did. It was fantastic. Did you, did you get it at an acceptable price? I did. Fantastic. That's that's all that matters. Rock it's like we're doing a podcast it. with Carrot Top. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> She's like pulling stuff out of the bag. Uh, rockauto.com. Uh, when you guys go there, man, it's amazing selection. Reliably low price. I can never say reliably low prices after amazing selection for some reason. Mm-hmm. Reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. All right. As we close out the show, I want you all to give me one thing that you're excited about for your respective school in the spring season. If you want to be spring football, fine. But if you guys want to get creative, you know, whatever you guys want to do. But I I just want to hear because basketball season's over. We are officially spring sports season, which turns into talking football season. But, you know, if we can keep it spring sport related, fine. It has to be football. That's fine. Linda, do you have one or do, do you need some time? No, I got it, but it is football, and uh, it's right. the Oklahoma State Cowboys adding almost a thousand pounds to the offensive line over the last two weeks. So pretty Thick jacked pounds. about that. Needed to happen. Thick with like five C's. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> like at least five C's. That doesn't sound uh, healthy. How many? How many? Guys. How many players is it? I was going to ask how many. 
Oh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was. Oh, is it two dudes? It was like just one, one and a half. half. <laughs> so was half. WCW tag team wrestling group. It's like 500 pounds each. In my they mind, the... I'm just picturing that each of those guys gained 200 pounds in the last week. So I'm like, <laughs> that's not good. I don't know why. Jake, what Sorry. are you fired up about? <laughs> so to back Linda up a little bit, BYU and the transfer portal added what they're calling their 500 pound running back package. Uh, Chris Brooks coming over from Cal weighs 240 pounds. And Houston Haymuley, who's a grad transfer from Stanford, is 260 pounds. 500 pounds that could be the starting uh, back uh, backfield for BYU. So just to back Linda up on that a little bit, it happens. So there you go. Uh, the other the other thing I wanted to pass along, BYU softball and BYU baseball off to really good starts. Uh, they're a cold-weather school, but both of them have winning, winning records at this point in the season. Very, very good, especially on the baseball side of things. The softball program's traditionally been very good, but baseball to have a winning record right now, that's a good sign for Mike Littlewood and his squad. So I've asked two of you, and this podcast has added 1,500, 1500 pounds hey, you know. already. Um Steven, did anybody at, at TCU football camp lose 20 to 30 pounds coming and looking lighter? Is that is that what we're getting? Yeah, we we did not add much weight, unfortunately, unless you count like my diet plan. But um, I am excited about Sonny Dykes and the Horn Frogs in spring practice. But let me go off the beaten path a little bit here. Beach volleyball, baby. Do I know much about it? No. But I know TCU is number two in the country. They beat UCLA twice this week, who was number one in the country. They're still number two in the poll. Don't know how that works. Not sure if Jesse Newell is voting or something or if, like, the beach volleyball. Wow. Hey, SIDs. that's he's a friend of the show. He is a friend of the show, Steven. I didn't say it was bad. I just said he usually takes a lot of heat for his the way he, he votes in the AP poll in yeah. basketball. Anyway, not sure how that works, but I'm excited about uh, the beach volleyball ladies, and I won't talk about any of their weights because I feel like that's a bad plan. So I'll just leave that alone. All I know is Misty May Trainer, Carrie Walsh, and Phil Dahlhauser. Those are the three people I know that's right. about beach volleyball. Uh, all right, John, what do you got? I know there's a lot happening for spring football for OU. Yeah, but I'm actually going to go softball. We're 32 and 0. Amazing. 26 run rule wins. Amazing. So far, 17, sorry, 17 shutouts on the season in 32 games. Last year, they had 24 in 60 games. Lead the league or lead the nation in earned run average. Has anybody ever gone on the field scored. in a full season? I'm going to have to look that up, and I feel bad for not knowing I, that. But we're, we're on undefeated watch at this point. It's still really going to be very, very unlikely. And it, if they can get through conference play like that, it would be highly unlikely. But you get to 32 and 0, you gotta start, you gotta start talking about it at some point. Spring football, the talk is they're going fast and they're gonna play fast. And that's gonna that's gonna be really fun to watch them getting up tempo in the fall. So the longest winning streak in softball history is 47 games, is what I'm looking at right here. Oklahoma. If you go back to last year, where they win the they won, they lost the first game of the College World Series. Yeah, so they're they've won thirty four in a row now. Thirty four in a row. Uh, I mean, you thought last year's team was good, you know? Damn, Patty Gasso, man. So like, it's a really fun conversation. Always, and actually, we're we're gonna do this here in the coming weeks. Discuss who are the best Big Twelve coaches, and like, irrespective of sport, which is gonna be a really fascinating and fun conversation. But holy hell! program she has built is just a machine from top to bottom and look for those of you out there who are like softball watch softball watch it's it. still fun i promise you'll love it also hey, it's as a baseball I'm, guy it's much shorter than baseball and i'm yeah. married to a former d1 softball player so i got got softballs back on this job did, did you did you did jake at first were you like eh, softball and i'm sure she brought you around you're like hell yes oh yeah no, I'm, I'm all in on it uh is it jocelyn allo right the jocelyn the Allo, yeah. She is absolutely insane. If you have not watched her hit a home run on a softball diamond, y'all are missing out. She is the closest thing that we've had. Uh, this is not hyperbole. She is the closest thing that we've had to Barry Bonds in a diamond sport, like literally since Barry Bonds. Like go and look at the numbers. It's the closest thing that we've had. It's unbelievable. Uh, so there, there you go. I love ending the show with some softball. All right, friends, time to do the plugs. Linda, you're up first. Where can the folks find you and your work and all of its variety, football, kickers, whatever the hell else you got going on? 
You know, say that like it's a bad thing. You can find all of my work on Twitter at Lynn Delians. Uh, my fantasy football work is on Matthew Berry's Fantasy Life newsletter. And then the show is at Locked On Pokes. Jake. Well, Locked On Cougars is now on YouTube, folks. Go search it out on YouTube. Subscribe. Hit that follow button. Enable notifications. All that fun jazz. Uh, you can find the show Locked On Cougars on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you want all my hot takes on all things sports, follow me, Jacob C. Hatch, on Twitter. Steven. I'm at Simcox Steven on Twitter. The show is at Locked On TCU. You can find Locked On Horn Frogs wherever it is you get your podcast. And then John. Yeah, I'm at John Nine Williams on Twitter at Locked On Sooners as well. Locked On Sooners podcast on Facebook, and one more little Jocelyn Allo Nugget. She was a state champion wrestler at 184 pounds her sophomore year of high school, and then retired to pursue her softball exploits. So and WrestleMania returned, just happened, and returned home to to, uh, to Hawaii to hit the all-time uh, leading home run, right? To become the mm-hmm. most home runs in history. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, plug so. your stuff. Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? And podcast, YouTube stuff. All right, you guys can find me on Twitter at Josh Neighbors underscore. You can find the show at LO Big 12 and on YouTube as well. We're all on YouTube now except for Steven. Yeah, holding out, baby. Yeah, just <laughs> what a – I mean – When he's not here next week, we'll know why. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's been canned. Uh, all right, so you guys can find me on YouTube. Uh, it's Locked on Big 12 and also find the show wherever you guys get your podcast. Friends, it's officially talking season. Uh, A pleasure to be with you guys. Talk to you guys all next week.